the spring of 2010. I was spring cleaning to make room for an addition to our family, our firstborn. As I picked up a tin of all appointment cards, one stood out. Marie Stopes International. I flipped open the card and the appointment date 27 August 2001 jumped at me. I was immediately transported back nine years to my days in London. It almost felt like yesterday. It was the year that I was 23 years old, a Malaysian student in London. I just met Neil five months earlier. Ours was a casual relationship that began to turn serious when we found out that I was pregnant. I clearly remember that day. I told him I missed my period. He insisted that I get a pregnancy test done. I was confident of my contraceptive pill regime and it took some convincing for me to get a pregnancy test. My mind was a flurry of white images as the second pink line appeared. Oh my god, oh my god, what do I do? Although not surprised, Neil was shocked as well. I went to the National Health Service, which then referred me to a family planning clinic near my college. Walking up the steps, I thought how ironic it all was. I was here not to have a family, and certainly not to plan for one. Another test confirmed my pregnancy. As Neil and I sat with the counsellor, she calculated that I was at the seventh week of my pregnancy. She presented me with various options and asked me to return in a few days with the decision. Neil tried to persuade me to keep the pregnancy. This was the second time he was going through an abortion and did not want to have the feeling of having lost the child again. I, on the other hand, was sure I couldn't go through with the pregnancy. I had a degree to finish and my commitments to my parents. They would be very, very disappointed. What's more, we were barely six months into the relationship and we were still not certain where it was going and what would happen after we graduated. The procedure cost 600 pounds, a big expense for us students. Neil respected my decision as he knew I was adamant. I sought an extension for my thesis from my department citing the abortion. My administrator was sympathetic and allowed me the extension. On the morning of 27th of August, we rode the train to the east end of London. The sun was up, casting a brightness on the chill in the air. Neil warned me that there might be pro-life demonstrators outside the clinic and for me to steal myself to drown out their voices. At the clinic, we sat waiting. There were women of diverse backgrounds. A middle-aged woman impatiently flipping through a magazine, a nervous-looking teenager with her mother. We waited and waited. Finally, my name was called out, and I was relieved that the waiting was over. Neil told me he was going to explore the neighborhood and would bring back the fried chicken and coke I was craving for. I was brought to a ward to get ready. A friendly nurse checked me and confirmed that I had not eaten anything since midnight. As I waited, I could hear the conversations around me. A woman was talking to another woman. I want to have this baby, but my husband, he thinks, he thinks it's not a good time yet. I think it should be all right. After all, I'm only 30. I can't wait. I should wait. Then she started sobbing and vomiting. I closed my eyes and wished it would all go away. I was taken to the operation theatre, where I was warmly greeted by the doctor. What a pleasant woman, I thought to myself. I was taken through the procedure and she told me she was first put me to sleep and then used the vacuum. The last I remembered was the gas mask over my face. As I woke, the first thought that came to my head was, Thank God I have the choice. After the abortion, I had a checkup and counseling session. I recovered physically from the abortion very quickly. Neil and I eventually built a life in Malaysia. I was convinced with each passing day that I had made the right choice. As I began to share my abortion story, I too began to get more stories. There were so many and all unlike what I had experienced.
like the story of the teenage girl, with only the help of her equally frightened friend, both of them frantically and calendarly dialing number after number to get hold of a doctor who was willing to carry out the abortion. The shame of having to borrow money that she did not have. Two frightened girls riding a motorcycle to and from the clinic, smothered by fear. As more stories surface, I realized how lucky I had been to have had a different experience. An experience that was free from judgmental doctors, nurses, friends. An experience that was free from the difficulty in getting information. A general experience that was free from fear. In 2007, I had an ectopic pregnancy. This time, I had planned to have a child. I was rut. Guilt, turning into a stormy sea, repeatedly rose and crashed down on me. Wave after wave. In the madness, my normally rational mind was convinced that I had been punished for my choice for having had an abortion. The inability to get pregnant was proof that I had damaged my body. After two more heart-wrenching years of trying, I finally got pregnant. This was a vindication of sorts. An unfounded victory that I was again right and deserved that right to make that choice for my body and my life. Or perhaps it was the cosmic forgiveness that I did not want to admit that I needed. For then, it meant that I believed in their arguments that the unborn baby's life was more important than mine.